I really enjoyed her music, and if you've not explored it, she's got tons of stuff out there. You can find it. This is the show where I talk about the artists that have been an important part of my life. It can be a small part of my life or my whole life, but in some way, they had an effect on how I listen to music. Welcome to Influencers. I'm T.C. Kirkham. Today's Influencer is a little bit different. I don't have a lot by this artist. I have a few. We'll talk about those. But she was nevertheless an important part of my early education in music. I grew up in Ohio for my grade school years and slightly before. Um, I was there from the age 6 to the age 11 and a half. And uh, we lived in several different towns. My mom's family was from the area. And so we lived there to be with them. And unlike me, who had grown up around kids prior to that that were into rock and roll, my, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, they were all into country music. Now... I wasn't a huge country fan. My stepfather at the time was a country fan, particularly Johnny Cash and Sonny James. My mom liked some country, but I never really got into it when I was little. I didn't really watch it. I watched a show called Swinging Country with my mom when it was on. I think that was 1967 or 68 with Roy Clark. It was on in the afternoon on NBC. Um, but I never really watched or thought of anything, unless uh, Hee Haw, my mom loved Hee Haw, but um, I fell in love with one particular performer back then. I was five, six, seven, until I was maybe ten when I was buying the stuff. I loved her voice. I loved the songs she did. Some of them I still don't have on vinyl or CD. I only have them on digital, but um, she was very influential during the first couple of years of my real interest in starting to buy records, mostly because of her 1970s smash, Rose Garden. Talking about this woman, Lynn Anderson. This is one of the two compilations I own by Lynn from her days on chart records, which were from 1966 to 1970. This is still my favorite period in her career. Lynn Anderson, Flower of Love, uh, and... Len Anderson, released on Mountain Dew, also with reissues from her chart years. I actually have two copies of this. This is my good copy. Uh, feature her doing a lot of songs that were best known by other artists or that had been hits for her on other albums. They were both released on smaller labels. This one is on Pickwick and this one on Mountain Dew Records, which I don't think still exists. Pickwick is still out there. Um, Flower of Love contains the title track. I need to turn my light on because it is really, it's, I've, I've marked it up as a kid. Uh, a Million Shades of Blue, Games People Play, Lie a Little, There Ought to Be a Law, Oki from Muskogee, Once a Day, Stand by Your Man, Paper Mansions, and A Penny for Your Thoughts. These songs were all produced by Slim Williamson. Um, this got a lot of play when I was a kid. This is one of the albums that was available in your local variety store, or local department store, or drug store for usually 99 cents or $1.99. Both of these were that way. Um, and that's why I got them, because at the time I had no allowance more than a dollar a week. Uh, I mean, it would go up to $5 when I got older and $20 when I was in high school. But it was, um, 
it was a little budget crunching if I tried to buy a full album. I had to wait for birthday money and stuff for that. So I got a lot of the budget albums, and I played this one and this one to death. The second one, Lynn Anderson, uh, that's this one, uh, has Harper Valley PTA, Big Girls Don't Cry, Auctioneer, Tear by Tear, If Silence is Golden, Ring of Fire, Crying, I Keep Forgetting, Pick of the Week, and In Person. And again, these were all from her days on chart records. Um, oddly enough, I don't have my favorite single from her on chart records anywhere but on digital. It's Rocky Top. I love that song from the very beginning. I was a kid. I think I was five or six when it came out. It came out right before Rose Garden because uh, she was finishing up her chart contract while recording her Columbia debut. And Rocky Top remains a favorite song of mine. I just love it to death. Um, on these two albums, though, um, she captured my imagination with her covers. Um, Games People Play, which is the Joe South song, great job. I love a song called Once a Day, which was a hit for her, and her cover of Tammy Wynette's Stand By Your Man are both great off of this album. Isn't And she's just really pretty there. Uh, and I thought so even when I was a kid. And off this album, I really dig her cover of Auctioneer, the Leroy Van Dyke hit. And she's quite good at it, too. I also like her cover of Harper Valley PTA and Crying. And Big Girls Don't Cry, which I think was a hit for her also. Um, another great song. These albums I played all the time. So much so that I ended up getting this a better, a pretty good shape copy of the one. I, the one I have is Trashed. Um, and it's back there. I didn't get it out. This is I got this from a family friend about six years later, and I've taken good care of it because I love it. This one, as you can see, has been played to death and is probably scratched all to hell. Oh, actually, not too bad. I haven't played it for a while. It's got surface wear, but that's probably about it. Um, these two albums played a big part of my life. Now, oddly enough, I didn't buy the Rose Garden album. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't actually bought any of her albums except one and the greatest hits collections I'm going to talk about um, until the last couple of years I picked up a couple more of her earlier albums uh, in the last couple of years because I just love her voice. Rose Garden was a favorite single of mine. I listened to it all the time. Would have been a number one hit, but I think it is on my number one classics hit uh, classics list. Um, I love her and I love that song and I had gotten to know her primarily from the Lawrence Welk show. My mom was an avid fan of that show, and she was a regular on there for about a year, and then she left and recorded Rose Garden and exploded. Um, she was a huge country star for many years, and she was all over television. I saw her on, on countless variety shows and country music shows, which were all over the place at the time. Um, and I grew to love her music more and more. As I said, I never bought the Rose Garden album, although I will eventually pick it up. Probably like I picked up a couple of later albums. This was the one one of the two that I picked up more recently. Uh, I picked this up, I think, from Adam at Record Crate. This is Len Anderson's You're My Man, which features the follow-up to Rose Garden, You're My Man, which was a great song. Also includes Joy to the World, Help Me Make It Through the Night, Proud Mary, Knock Three Times, Flying Machine, Put Your Hand in a Hand, Cry, Cry Again, I'm Gonna Write a Song, I Can Spot a Cheater, I Might As Well Be Alone, and the title track. Um, back in the early 70s, a lot of albums by country artists were primarily cover tunes of other you know, it was done that way in the 60s, too. I mean, Nancy Sinatra had tons of cover tunes on her albums, and, and, and so on and so forth. But once in a while, there would be an original hit, and You're My Man was it off this album. I, I loved that song, and it also hit the pop chart, not as high as Rose Garden, but it was a, it was a pretty good song. And as those two songs came along, I just fell in love with her. Um... Her version of I'm going to write uh, I'm going to of um, I'm going to write a song was I believe it was a country country songwriter that did that and it was actually a hit off this album um, and the covers here are pretty good too um, it's a little weird hearing her sing Joy to the World but you know pretty good and it's a top notch album she was a top notch performer the album that I bought when it came out I had birthday money at the time I think or 
actually, I think it was Christmas money because I do believe I bought this around Christmas time uh, in 1972, right? Um, this was her... Well, I actually may have gotten it through Columbia House. I don't see any Columbia House na notes here, but it may have been from them. This was How Can I Unlove You. This was I loved this, although I don't... I don't particularly care for that picture. I think it makes her look like a waxwork, similar to the Donnie and Marie album I showed on uh, Vinyl Recall recently. Um, How Can I Unlove You was a number one hit for her. Don't Say Things You Don't Mean. You've Got a Friend, Easy Lovin', Here I Go Again, What's Made Milwaukee Famous, Take Me Home Country Roads, There's not. There's been, Never Been Another, and There's Never Been Anyone Like You, All Day Sucker, uh, That's What Loving You Has Meant to Me, and Simple Words. Um, How Can I Unlove You was a big hit. I love her cover of Freddie Hart's Easy Lovin', which was uh, always on my grandpa's radio in the day. Um, you Got a Friend, great job of the James Taylor song, uh, written, of course, by Carol King, but made famous by James Taylor. Um, really good stuff all the way around. And she never, never aimed at the pop market. She was always country. People gave her cra crap because she grew up in California, she was that California kid, but she loved country music. Her mother, Liz, had grown up in the Appalachians, and, uh, of course, Liz was a country singer and a star in her own right. Um, and um, she kind of got the bad... I don't know why that reputation would have preceded her in a bad way since Buck Owens, one of the top country stars of the day, was from Bakersfield. You know, he was, he was the Bakersfield country, and... and um, People did give him some crap, but not much. He has a loyal following online. I know Chris Profi's a huge fan. Um, and um, there shouldn't have been that kind of stigma for Lynn either. Now, I picked up this album recently, and um, I've only listened to it once. I only had time to listen to it once. But it's rather good. This is 1974's um, What a Man My Man Is. There we go. And the back, of course glaring off the protector there uh, what a man my man is I honestly love you everything's falling into place tell me a lie uh, someone to finish what you started everybody's somebody's fool I won't go back to Denver uh, please don't tell me how the story ends walk me to the door where is all where is all that love you talked about and I feel a new man today this is a good album and I particularly like her take on Olivia Newton-John's I Honestly Love You, and on another song that a lot of people may or may not remember, an artist named Sammy Joe had a hit with Tell Me a Lie in 1974, and it was a really great, great song, a little ballad. Um, I, I'm, I, I love Lynn, and this is really a terrific album, and if I'd had it to listen to, I had a couple of the singles again through there. I had quite a few of the singles. Uh, I would have listened to her. I love the voice, and I got most of the play that she got from me were from her Greatest Hits albums. Now, I don't normally show those here, but they're important because they have all of her hits and all of the familiar stuff to me that was familiar to me and that did play an influence on me. Lynn Anderson's Greatest Hits has Rose Garden, Cry, her version of the Johnny Ray song. I believe Johnny Ray was the one that made that famous. Uh, how Can I Unlove You? Stay There Till I Get There. That's What Loving You Has Meant to Me and Listen to a Country Song. And Side 2 has You're My Man, No Love at All. Don't Say Things You Don't Mean. I'm Going to Write a Song and Nothing Between Us. Six hit, uh, Seven hits, four album tracks. Really great collection of music. Love her cover of Cry. I love Listen to a Country Song, which is one of my favorite songs by her, um, which is also on How Can I Unlove You, I believe. I thought it might not be. Um, her version of No Love at All was great, too. And, and again, produced by Glenn Sutton, who was her husband at the time. Terrific collection of hits, including all the favorites that I used to listen to and hear on my grandpa's radio when we were over at Grandma and Grandpa's almost every weekend. The same can be said for Lynn Anderson, Volume 2, Greatest Hits. This includes her songs from 73 to 76, including What a Man My Man Is, Smile For Me, Top of the World, Keep Me In Mind, Dixieland, You Will Never Die, All the King's Horses, He Turns It Into Love Again, I've Never Loved Anyone More, Sing About Love, and Rodeo Cowboy. It was Len Anderson's version of Top of the World in 1973, 
which spurred Richard Carpenter to finally release the song as a single from the Song For You album. When the singles album came out in late 1973, they re-recorded it with a style very similar to the countryfied twang Len used, and Top of the World became Carpenter's second of three number one hits on the pop chart. She hit number two on the country chart with this, and also bobbled in the bottom part of the Hot 100. I think she got to number 60-something, which might be why Richard was hasty in recording and re-releasing it. Um, Love What a Man My Man Is, All the King's Horses, both of those huge hits on the country chart for Lynn. Now, this is my output for what I have in my collection. I've loved her voice since I was a kid, and as I said, um, I did hear her earlier, some of her earlier stuff that was on the radio if my mom had it on because they did play uh, a couple of her earlier songs including uh, Rocky Top on an easy listening station that she used to listen to and Rocky Top to me is Lynn's best song it always will be um, it you know talks about the, the Tennessee hills that she loves so much even though she grew up mostly in California she was actually born in North Dakota um, Lynn's career went up and down throughout the, the 70s and 80s, and by the 1990s, she wasn't recording much at all, and by the 2000s, she was mostly touring in concerts. She did have some legal problems. She got a couple of DUIs and a shoplifting arrest when she got older in the, in the 2000s. Um, but she never lost that fan base. I've, I'm one of those. I've loved her music since I was a kid and easily listened to her sing anything. Now, I've listened to quite a few of the later stuff on, on Spotify and online, and I love it too. I don't own them. Uh, I haven't had the, I, I don't really need to own them. I can hear them online. They're not favorites like these are. But I did buy two of the three. I'm still looking. I'd still like to get Rose Garden and Top of the World, the albums. Uh, so, Adam, if you're watching, put them aside for me if you find them. Um, I, um, I always have thought that she was highly underrated by the next generation. By the time the 1970s, late 70s, and early 80s came along, she'd been supplanted by another generation of singers, um, artists like Reba McIntyre, Shelley West, and uh, a few others. And people just kind of threw her down, and that wasn't right. She did bounce back for a couple of more big hits in the 1980s, but she never really took off again after that, and that's a shame. Her legacy is important. Rose Garden is one of the most known songs in the whole world. It was a number one hit in numerous countries. Um, it was sampled in Con Can's I Beg Your Pardon in 1976, uh, 1986 or 87. Um, it is a universally known song. And I actually played it on Obscuria not that long ago. Um, I, I love Lynn's music and I always will. And although this is not one of my really long influencers, it is important because not only were the albums important, as I said, she was all over television. And my mom knew Lynn Anderson was on a country show if I was going to be there watching. Because I was not a big fan. Lynn Anderson, Tanya Tucker, and a couple of other people that I didn't mind, that I don't have a lot by, Barbara Fairchild, um, Jeannie Pruitt, uh, Conway and Loretta. I, I I was not a big country fan, but if Lynn Anderson was going to be on a TV show, I was planted in front of the TV because I would watch her every time, whether she was doing Hee Haw, Pop Goes the Country, um, any number of other variety shows that were around, including um, the Porter Wagner show. Um, there were um, a couple of other syndicated shows that she would appear on that weren't strictly country. Um, I, I always would watch her, and she also would show up on the talk show circuit, um, which at that time, good Lord, at that time it included, um, you know, shows like the Dinah Shore Show, uh, the Mike Douglas Show, the Merv Griffin Show, um, uh, Girl Talk with Virginia Graham, uh, which actually was over fairly early in her career. Um, she would do those occasionally, too, and I would, I would watch her there, too. If she was on, I was watching her because I loved her music, and I thought she was really pretty, and I still do. Um, we lost Lynn in uh, the mid-2010s um, of a heart attack after a brief illness after coming home from vacation in Italy. Um, she was an amazing performer who deserved 
uh, better than she got for her whole body of work. She's going to be remembered mostly for Rose Garden, which is probably fitting. But um, And the fact that the forest lawn of the Nashville Stars, I've forgotten the name of it, Wood, it's something Woodlawn Cemetery in Nashville. She is buried alongside her mother and her father, and they have also uh, put together there a, a 10... I forgot how big they said it was, an acre or two large rose garden, uh, which is all planted with the, the rose that was named after Lynn Anderson after Rose Garden became a big hit. Lynn Anderson deserves better than she gets, and a lot of today's country artists do say that they have cited her as an inspiration, um, including someone else I'm going to talk about later this season. I really enjoyed her music. And if you've not explored it, she's got tons of stuff out there. You can find her albums very easily. Um, if you find them in the bargain bin, they're not always going to be in the best shape. But if you do find them in good shape, grab them, especially How Can I Unlove You, which is one of my favorite albums by her, or these two early albums of her chart uh, chart records career. And, and there is a, a CD retrospective out there. I have just found out about it when I was looking stuff up for the show of her chart career, which I'm going to order for sure because I love her music from back then. And I'd love to have them on CD so I don't have to hear the crack because, like I said, they're old and crackly in places. But there's still albums I still love, and I still love Lynn Anderson, and I always will. Lynn, thank you so much for being an influence on my early childhood, and I'm sorry you didn't get the respect you deserved as I grew up and as country changed all around you. If you've already subscribed to my shows, thank you. I really appreciate it. If not, please do. It's great fun. I try to have fun with every show I do. And if you, and if you would, please leave a comment. I'm always interested in talking to other people and, and people who are interested in what I'm interested in and, and taking the time to find out what I'm interested in because sometimes it's not always the same that most of the other vinyl community members are interested in. I don't think I've ever heard a single vinyl community member bring up the name Len Anderson. Might be wrong, I'm sure. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Vinyl Richie has something by her. I'm pr probably pretty sure my pal Steve at Value Vinyl has something by her. But I never hear it brought up. And she deserves better. She's really good. And uh, I hope that you will take the time to check out my other shows uh, every, uh, throughout the week. Uh, Vinyl Recall on uh, Wednesday. Rank This on Thursday. Label Nova on Alternate Fridays, the Kirkham Report on Saturday, and the Radio Retro Countdown on Sunday. My bi-weekly show on Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern, Finding Your Music Mojo with Dawn at Two Hip Chicks. This coming weeks will be on my channel uh, next Monday. And uh, we'll be talking radio on that show. And my daily show, TC's Obscuria Vaults, Monday through Fridays at 11. I hope you'll check them out. And check out the music of Lynn Anderson. She might surprise you. For Influencers, I'm T.C. Kirkham. Ciao, baby.